Today we're going to look at the revision of adverbials. This will help you when you're writing. Adverbials give the reader more information in a sentence, so we can add in when, where or how something has happened. An adverbial phrase is a group of two or more words which act as an adverb in the sentence. We'll have a look at those now. So adverbials for when might be first, after a while, later that day, before dinner. These are adverbial phrases as they've got more than one word. Adverbials for where might be in far off land, around the corner, at the top of the mountain, in a dark cave. All of these are adverbial phrases. Adverbials for how might be quietly, wildly, at the top of his voice, as quick as a flash. You tell us how something is done. These two are adverbial phrases. Let's have a look at how that works in the sentence. So we've just got a basic sentence. The farmer milked the cows. No extra information. What about if we add this? Early in the morning, the farmer milked the cows. Now we've added when. We've added it at the beginning and it's an adverbial phrase. Where? The farmer milked the cows in the large barn. Now we know where the farmer was doing it, in the large barn. This time we've added the adverbial phrase at the end of the sentence. How? The farmer milked the cows gently. We've added it at the end and it tells us how the farmer was milking. Pause the video while you have a go at this task. You've got two things to do. The first one, you need to identify where the adverbial is in the sentence and then ask yourself, is it giving the reader more information about when, where or how? When you're ready, unpause the video and we can check the answers together. So the first one, the dog raced towards me at an incredible speed. The adverbial here is at an incredible speed. How did the dog race towards me? At an incredible speed. So it's an adverbial for how. The next one. I think I will plant those seeds in front of the fence. The adverbial is in front of the fence. It's telling me where the seeds are going to be planted. Early every morning, I try to run five kilometers. Early every morning is the adverbial. It's at the beginning this time, but it tells us when that happens or how often something happens. Now we're going to have a look at fronted adverbials. We saw on the last one that the adverbial could go at the front. This is therefore called a fronted adverbial. So we're going to take a simple sentence again, the lion roared, and add, front, add fronted adverbials for when, where and how. So here we've got the lion roared on each sentence. I'm going to change it slightly. So for when, as the sun set, comma, the lion roared. Note the comma after the fronted adverbial. Where? On the plains of Africa, the lion roared. Note the comma after the adverbial phrase. How? Powerfully, the lion roared. Note the comma after we have the fronted adverbial. We always have a comma after the fronted adverbial just to separate it off from the rest of the sentence so we can see where the adverbial phrase is. Now it's your turn. Pause the video again and have a look at these sentences. You need to rewrite them so that the adverbial is at the front and don't forget the comma. So the first one, the snail crossed the garden very slowly. 
James flew his kite in the open fields, and Tanvir attends tuition every Thursday. So have a go at that. Rewrite the sentences with the fronted adverbial at the front. Don't forget the comma. Unpause the video when you're ready to check your answers. This is what you should have. Very slowly, comma, the snail crossed the garden. Very slowly shows us how the snail was moving. In the open fields, comma, James flew his kite. Here we find out where James was when he flew the kite. Every Thursday, comma, Tanvir attends tuition. Make sure that you've got the comma in, that's very important with the fronted adverbial. Adverbial phrases also help us to link ideas. They give us the cohesion that glues the text together, just makes it helps it to make it more sense. Let's have a look at this Goldilocks story and see what you think. Goldilocks decided to go for a walk. A family of bears were out walking. Goldilocks spotted a house. She went inside. She ate the porridge. She broke a chair. She went upstairs and fell asleep. The bears looked about in shock. They saw the porridge had all gone. The chair was broken. They found Goldilocks sleeping. It's a bit like a broken chain. It's not all linking together very well. We don't know when things are happening. We don't know where they're happening. It's just a bit short and not very helpful for the reader. So let's see what happens when we put in adverbials. I'm going to ask you to pause the video in a moment and you're going to have a look and see. This is the same story but we've added adverbials in for time and number and place to give the reader a better understanding of what's happened. Pause the video while you see if you can find those adverbials and see if you can recognise whether they're time, number or place and how they help the reader. When you're ready, unpause the video and we'll look at it together. Let's see if you found the adverbials that glue the text together. Hopefully you can see how this is much easier to read and the reader's got more idea of when things are happening and where things are happening, so getting a much better picture. One day Goldilocks decided to go for a walk in the nearby woods. One day is a time adverbial, it tells us when everything is happening. Goldilocks decided to go for a walk in the nearby woods. So that's added information, now we know where it's happening. Meanwhile, there's another time adverbial. It tells us that while Goldilocks is doing something, the family of bears are also doing something at the same time. Meanwhile, a family of bears were out walking while, time adverbial, their porridge cooled. Soon, time adverbial, Goldilocks spotted a house in a small clearing. Now we know where the house is, so that's another adverbial for place. She went inside. First, she ate the porridge. So we have uh, an adverbial of number, firstly, secondly. First she ate the porridge, then, time adverbial, she broke a chair. After that, fronted adverbial, she went upstairs and fell asleep. So we've got much more idea now of the order that things are happening in. Later that day, comma, fronted adverbial for time, the bears arrived home and looked about in shock. First, Comma, time adverbial, they saw the porridge had all gone. Secondly, so we have an adverbial for number, the chair was broken. Finally, time adverbial, they found Goldilocks sleeping in Baby Bear's bed. So it tells us where she is. We've added some extra information. Did you find all of those? Time adverbials are easier. Check out that you've added in when you're doing your writing place adverbials as well, so people who are reading will know where the action is taking place. You can use adverbial phrases in non-fiction as well. So a good example would be if you're having a discussion or trying to persuade somebody to do something that they don't want to do. The following adverbial phrases will help you to either give more information or contradict the information that the other person is trying to give you. So you could use words such as but, on the other hand, however, on the contrary, nevertheless, although, consequently, in addition, also, therefore, furthermore, 
as a result and including. You might want to stop the video now and just make a note of some of those. You might want to use them later in your challenge. Let's look at how adverbials have been used in this argument to further develop a viewpoint. Has the time come to ban cars from the centre of towns and cities? In a small country like the UK, so we're starting with a place adverbial, so we know that this is all relevant to people who live in the UK. In a small country like the UK, cities are close enough together to cause high levels of traffic fume pollution in the air over large areas of land. Consequently, so as a result of this, consequently health problems are created such as asthma, which is rapidly increased as the number of cars on the road is written. An additional problem, so we're adding to the argument, an additional problem in urban areas is congestion, which wastes time and adds to costs. On the other hand, so this is signalling a different point of view. On the other hand, it could be argued that such a ban would create other problems. Public transport in this country is expensive and sometimes unreliable. Unreli would there be enough trains and buses to cope with the numbers needing them? Furthermore, so we're adding more to this side of the argument now, there is also the issue of personal freedom. Is it right to prevent people from choosing the mode of transport they prefer? Many people feel safer in their cars when travelling at night than they do on a bus or a train. So here the adverbials have been used to further develop the argument or to oppose the argument on the other hand, so a different point of view. Now your challenge. I'm sure every day you have a discussion or you try to persuade somebody to do something that that they don't necessarily want to do. This time, I want you to think carefully about the language that you're using. So think about all of those words that we've just looked at and phrases and see if you can use them while you're having a discussion with your friends or brothers or sisters or your parents. Here are some ideas of the, th the sorts of things that you could have a discussion about. Should children wear school uniform? Is it good to be famous? Should all children have a pet? Should football be banned? Do computer games help children to learn? You might also want, could I stay up late tonight and watch? But have a go at using those adverbials just to link your ideas together. You can do this as a written exercise or you can do it just as a spoken exercise. But think about the words that you're using to persuade. Thank you for joining us again. Today we've covered when, where and how for adverbials to add more information to the sentence so that your reader has a better sense of what's happening and when. Fronted adverbials, which go at the front of the sentence, don't forget the comma when you're talking about that. And the way that adverbials can be used to link together an argument. When you're reading, look out, see if you can spot any of those adverbials, especially the fronted adverbials. Don't forget to look for the comma. Thanks for joining us again and keep reading. See you next time. Thank you.